Okay, this is a little bit experimental. This is a video about code optimization uh, using VTune. I am Cliff Harris, uh, generally known as Cliffsky. Um, I've been an indie game developer for 20 years. I've been programming for 37 years. And um, one of the things that, that I kind of enjoy doing as a coder is optimizing code so that it runs really fast. Um, there aren't seemingly that many videos about how to do this with a real example of a video game um, using some of the the kind of like commercial profilers out there so I thought I'd do a quick video and see if people liked it or not um, and uh, so here we go um, I am currently developing a game called production line it's a car factory simulation game that I'll show you a little bit of in, in a minute so you get an idea what I'm on about um, and it is for the PC. It's a PC game developed in C++ with an engine that was coded by me. And it's a, a nice metric game. I'm currently using Visual Studio uh, 2013. I see no immediate reason to upgrade that. And the engine is coded using uh, DirectX 9, although eventually I'll, I'll upgrade that. I'll just... Um, Hopefully this will all work and it'll be in this monitor and everything, blah, blah, blah. So this is what the game looks like. Uh, I will just load in a, I'll load in this, this version of it, just to show you the sort of thing uh, that I'm talking about. So it's, it's like a top down, well, it's like an isometric game. Uh, there's some placeholder graphics in here at the moment because there's some shader stuff that I'm working on. Uh, so only some of the cars look right and some of the cars don't. But it, it's this sort of thing uh, is basically what I'm getting at. And one of the things about this game is you have loads and loads of these little objects moving along here if I mouse over one. Um, resource objects. And they intelligently decide where to go over a sort of network of conveyor belts. That uses an enormous amount of processing. So what's needed in that case is um, a lot of multi-threading. So anyway, that's what the game looks like. So um, I use a lot of profilers. I use something called AQ Time. I have also used, which is a commercial one. It's uh, that's about six hundred dollars or a bit more, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I also use the profiler that, that is built into to Visual Studio, although I don't find that to be particularly good at all. And um, I use Intel's VTune. So the, the latest version of VTune, that, that's about $800 as well, um, is called XE Amplifier. VTune XE Amplifier. I don't know why it's called this sort of thing. Um, I also use NVIDIA's Insight stuff for graphics debugging, by the way. So um, what I'm going to do in this video is just give you a very quick kind of guide to VTune, what it looks like and how it works. I'm not going to really teach you how to optimize a game. Um, but I think that there's a lot of coders out there that, that, that maybe they only have ever used Unity and they've only ever used the Unity profiler or they've never done any profiling and they don't really realize what you can do and you can do crazy stuff. So um, first of all, I'd like to explain how this stuff is installed. I mean, you know, you download one and install it and tell it you've got uh, Visual Studio and it integrates into the IDE so you're not launching another program or you don't have to launch another program so there, there's probably some extra like menu stuff up here there you go Intel VTune amplifier XE 2017 um, okay that's great whatever but it actually integrates into the project like this uh, so if I go down here and go to Intel VTune amplifier XE blah 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 um, and go new analysis does that launch it straight away? I can't remember. I think it does. Um, yeah. Now, is it doing it or is it? Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I keep fiddling with these settings. So there's loads of different things you can do. I'd set it up to do memory analysis here. We're not going to do that. Um, but the thing I'm going to select here is concurrency. You can change all these settings and you can start paused. So um, you only profile a small section of the game. Um, there's loads of groovy settings here, but basically I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm going to click on start, uh, blah, 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 a little bit of a delay and then it launches the game. Now the game is possibly going to run a little bit slower. I'm going to load exactly the same. What did I load? Powertrain bug, didn't I? Yeah. 
Um, this game's already massively optimized, so this is not really going to stress it one bit. Um, even though there is actually quite a lot of stuff going on. But I'm just going to run this for a little bit. Um, then I'm going to launch a full screen dialogue. Just I'll explain why in a minute. Get out of that. And then I'm going to quit. Normally you'd run for ages, right? Or you'd do a specific thing that you were worried about. So what happens is a lot of data is written to, to disk during that. Uh, you can cap it. Um, I, I think by default it caps at like one gigabyte or something like that. Um, so it saves out all of these files to disk and then it has to kind of like process them like this. It's complaining there about some symbols that I don't have which are for Windows stuff. I don't care. I can't alter the code for Windows stuff. So if the Windows stuff is slow, the Windows stuff is slow. Um, you know, that's I'll still know it, right? But I won't need to kind of like step through the code to... Uh, you know the innards of, of, of Windows. This sort of stuff takes time especially if you're also streaming but here we go. Um, one of the things worth pointing out is this th this is just a window right uh, within the IDE. It is slightly buggy VTune. If you do certain things while it's busy it will crash. So anyway I can I can I can you know I can resize this window however I like. Um, I'm going to put it there a bit so you can still see my wonderful face. Um, so by default it's going hotspots by CPU usage. Now what I'm actually worried about at the moment is multi-threading. Uh, although I'm not because I've done it quite a lot. So I'm going to switch that to go by concurrency. Again a little bit of processing and it's telling me where most of the, the kind of um, concurrency issues are which I know anyway. Um, you can set values here to say um, what you consider to be poor, okay, and ideal, and, and then it, it, it kind of populates some graphics here and there. So I've kind of said that I always want to be using between like two and six threads. Ideally, I want to be using eight threads uh, because on the PC that I'm running, it's um, it's a sort of eight core thing or like four hyperthreaded cores. So uh, there's no point in me running more than eight threads because like I can't actually do more than eight threads anyway. Um, but this stuff is arbitrary and, and you can ignore it all. Okay. CPU usage. Well, I kind of I kind of don't care what I care about is the concurrency. I want to get my money's worth. Now there's all these different views you can have. There's um, bottom up, cooler and coolly, uh, you know, top down tree and all the rest of it. So you can look at all of the functions here and see you know how much time is wasted and whether or not by my own criteria the concurrency is good or bad. Um, I don't find this stuff massively useful although you'll notice if you can click on anything you'll also get um, the call stack for it which is interesting. Um, what I'm going to go with is I'm going to go with platform which is the view that I really like. Now it's hideously complex right. Um, I think makes sense to resize this a bit at the moment. Now one of the things to get VTune to not crash and to work properly is to narrow down um, things to only what you really want to look at. So I don't care about any process that isn't production line.exe which is my game. Okay so it will filter out other stuff and I don't care about any module that isn't production line.exe. So in other words if um, uh, the NVIDIA driver stuff has been captured and it has it will capture everything. Um, I kind of don't want to see that either. So what I've got left now is only really my code. Okay now the reason I've got all these lines is that I have seven threads plus my main thread. I know it's an eight thread PC so on startup what my system does it says well you know let's generate an extra seven threads. Other threads will also be used for like sound processing and stuff by some middleware that I use but I'm not too bothered about that. Okay so this is basically my game. So this is when I go to uh, when we sort of launch the game. This is at the main menu here. Um, I then click on load game which does this. It's not particularly multi-threaded at all when it's loading. Then when I've loaded this stuff here this is, is doing some pre-calculating of routes, some pre-caching of routes. That then stops once I've got all of them there but we're still in the game. This is us playing the game. Things change a lot here when I go to that full screen dialogue. 
um, because that cuts down the processing massively. It's easy to, just to draw a bunch of icons, right? Um, so the processing drops a lot there. And then I went back and then I quit out and that's just clearing up the memory at the end there. Um, and you can turn off certain of these things. Uh, something that I quite like looking at here is the thread concurrency. So um, this is the extent to which I'm actually using the multi-threaded capabilities of the game, of the PC. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in on a certain bit. We'll just pick a bit of normal gameplay like that. And you can see these these individual purple bits here are, are individual frames uh, being rendered or processed. Uh, and you can see the spikes here. So this is kind of like some bits of each frame are really concurrent, other bits aren't. So let's zoom in on, seems to be a lot happening there. Let's zoom in on that. So here, this is one frame. And all these little markers here are individual events happening. So here, at this point, I'm massively multi-threaded. And you can see that the peak there. So there, that's pre-draw props, which is a bit of processing, a bit of transformation stuff that I have to do. And it takes a while because there's a lot of objects in the game. So I split it over as many threads as possible, eight in this case, um, including the base thread will do it as well while it's waiting. So at that point, um, I'm doing really well because otherwise I'd have to bunch up all of these and string out the length of the frame. The frame is currently 14.859 milliseconds there, which is a little bit below 60 frames a second. Um, and, and that one's quite long as well. I'm not quite sure why that is actually. Um, and here's another thing that I'm multi threading a lot, pre-draw notices. That's surprisingly slow. Now, I can click on these and with any luck, it depends what my settings are actually. I should get a, um, I sh oh no, hang on, that's that's not right. Overhead and spin time, stacks, blah, 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 blah. Uh, maybe not, maybe not. I tend not to use that, to be honest. Um, I tend not to like look at this stuff. The reason I do this is I want to know Firstly, is my multi-threading working? And secondly, um, am I optimizing the wrong thing? So for example, if you look if you look here, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit again. You can zoom in a lot, okay? Um, this is something that I, I can't multi-thread, production slot processing. That can't be multi-threaded because there's too much in the, in the way of conflicts. Now in this particular frame, um, I'm having to do hundreds of these and it's not multi-threaded and it takes up a big chunk of the frame. That's a problem and a code issue that I should look into. Now, when I get to the, pre the process vehicle list here, that's very nicely multi-threaded here. And you can see how it's intertwining with some other tasks that I've got going. So that is uh, power management processing, um, which I'm doing on, the, on one of the free threads while I do this other thing. So I'm very pleased with the way that works. Um, now, what I'm going to explain to you is how the hell I got all this, because this is VTune does not do this. OK, VTune will not do that. What it will do is it will do the spiky stuff. Right. And it's very good at, for example, um, this sort of thing. It takes ages to populate this stuff. It, it's funny, really, that um, VTune isn't more optimized. <laughs> so here, if I, I can look at something, I don't know. Um, uh, what would be a good one? Game preload textures. If I double click on that, I, I may have turned off. No, I haven't. There you go. Um, so it will then actually load in my source code. So this is the source code, preload textures here. Um, and, you know, depending what I picked, if I picked something that was particularly relevant, uh, that, that was a really bad example, actually. Um, it will show me loads of stats about it. Um, what would be a better one? What would be one that actually happens all the time? Production slot process, maybe? Um, that might be bad. No, no, no. I don't really use this stuff um, that much. Oh, it's because I'm doing concurrency. So if I swap back um, to CPU usage, it would change. Anyway, um, how do I get this stuff? How do I how do I get to check um, the, where all of these individual processes start? Because the problem is, you'll know if you're um, 
if you're a, a developer that hasn't used any like concurrency analyzer, which is another thing that I, I sometimes use, um, or stuff like this, you'll know that if you put a breakpoint in your code and you hit that code and you've got like eight threads running, um, then you don't really know what's going on, right? It's kind of chaos. Multi-threaded programming is kind of chaos. It will stop all threads automatically and you'll see what some threads are doing and other threads are idle, but you don't get a nice overview like this. And this stuff is brilliant. So in order to get this to happen, in order to get these markers to be placed in the code, you have to edit your code. So I'm just gonna, um, oh wow, that, that was, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? So all of these things, like if we take like, um, like VT slot man proc, for example, like how did that get in the code? Now, basically there is a header file for uh, VTune that lets you put markers in your code. If I look in the right place, which would be, I think it would be in Sim, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be in my thread manager stuff. Um, I have some macros that do this. So I have a macro that is called start thread profile X, which just saves a lot of typing. That's the only reason this exists, that calls this function VT start task X. If I jump in there, it calls this function ITT task begin. There's another one called ITT task end. Now this is part of the VTune stuff that um, you get when you buy it and you install it in Visual Studio. And you can basically pass it in a string, okay? And um, you can declare that when it starts and declare when it ends. And it will then populate the results with that with those markers. So if I look, if I go to the actual running of the game, which must be somewhere, right? It's a stupidly complicated game. It must run from somewhere. Um, oh, there it is, sim game, right? So if we go in there and I go to process frame, it's a good one. Um, right, and, and you can nest them as well. This is the other thing. So here, when I start process frame, I call um, VT underscore process frame. I then add a task to my thread manager. I then add a few. And what those tasks do is they process stuff that itself adds more of these little markers. Now at the end of the frame, I'll call VTN task. So that whole thing there is process frame. Um, did we close it? No, we didn't, did we? Um, so this process frame thing here, that's that. Inside that I've got slot man process and I've got hundreds of these little vt underscore prod slot processes um, that are all called inside. So you can nest these things as much as you want. If a different thread calls it, it just doesn't matter. It knows which thread and it will put it on the appropriate line. So you can get this sort of massive nesting that goes on. That's really cool. It makes such a difference um, because otherwise it's, it's quite hard to tell. If you look in a normal profiler and you, you ask, for example, um, how long uh, pre-draw props takes. It will tell you how long pre-draw props takes, but it won't tell you effectively how much time in the processing of your game that took. Because if you spread it over eight threads, then it will take one eighth of that time if your thread scheduler is good, okay? Um, if your thread scheduler is bad, it's a nightmare. If other tasks in your thread scheduler um, are gonna interfere with that, then it will take longer and you don't know what thread's gonna get what, you don't know really what's gonna happen. So actually looking in a normal profiler and finding how long it took to run um, this task is effectively useless in terms of optimizing your game. Let me just like explain that a little bit more because it is absolutely crucial. If you're not, ah, you see, all I'm doing was resizing and it doesn't like it. What was it? It was it was 20, wasn't it? Do not send report. I'm sick of telling VTune it's crashed. Now it comes back, which is kind of like, you know, not bad. Um, and all of the results are saved. So I can just I can just reload that, right? It's not a problem. None of the data's lost. Um, but it's forgotten that I'm that I'm doing um, that I'm doing uh, thread concurrency. Which is fair enough. I don't know. It, it seems to have a problem that where, where when it's like filtering and processing and you change the GUI, it can't cope, which is, which kind of sucks, right? You know, it should be better than that. Um, so by the way, all this other stuff down here that, that I got rid of, um, this is other stuff 
that was like running this that's um kind of not related to my code uh so if you use a lot of middleware or something um you'll see a lot of that so yeah you can do mega nesting let's have a look at this this is when i do all of that crazy stuff um so if you look look there that's a frame at the start of the game when i'm pre-processing a load of stuff and and look that was another little bug there i don't know if you noticed that ah it's not it really hates that do not send reload i'm gonna make this point if it kills me <clears throat> I'm probably slightly more chirpy and upbeat than most videos about using VTune. Probably done by people who work at Intel, taking it very seriously. Um, yeah, this little filter thing here is, is, is kind of the problem. It doesn't like changing stuff when it's filtering. So yeah, filter down. Filter your ass. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't like that, doesn't like that. Let's try that again. Yeah, I mean, like, what the hell? So check this out for mega nesting. Behold the nesting. Um, so this is all one thread. I've achieved nothing by doing this, right, except for my own benefit in terms of checking that this function calls those, which calls that, which calls this. I mean, you can tell that anyway, but um, it, it it was relevant at the time. So you could do, do loads of mega nesting, right? Um, what I'm trying to point out is this is, a, this is a frame of my game here yeah and it's only where there's these blocks that i'm doing anything apart from apart from up up here there is there is some stuff going here which i wasn't interested in in, in measuring but what i'm getting at is here i'm only using like an eighth of the pc and this is due to my the, the way i've designed stuff it is a little bit um, annoying in that i can't really multi-thread that stuff um, it's absolutely vital to be able to tell the concurrency levels if you're attempting to multi-thread. If you can't have any way of observing the concurrency level when you're profiling, you have no idea what you're doing. If you're not multi-threading, that's fine, but it's crazy because you're, you're, you're running your game at one-eighth the speed that it could. So you, you really should learn about multi-threading. And once you've learned about multi-threading, which is incredibly hard and difficult, um, you really need to know what it does. Um, and if you use um, some middleware or some other engine like Unity or whatever, it's no good just ticking the box saying, multi-thread this please, and assume it's it's gonna do a perfect job because it's this stuff's really hard and you really need to like look into it um, and, and see what's going on. So for example there, look, that there's a few tasks which I split over different threads to save time there, okay, but it's kind of, it's kind of trivial. I didn't even have eight tasks at that point. I haven't saved a lot. This VT underscore ISO render, I should multi-thread that. For technical reasons, I can't. DirectX related reasons until I upgrade to a multi-threaded version of DirectX, I can't do that. Um, but at least I know what is holding me back. These are the only things that hold me back because I need to get all this purple stuff done and then I can end the frame. I'm actually running at way over speed here. So actually here, that's um, all of this stuff here. I'm just waiting for effectively for V-Sync, right? Um, because I'm capping it at 60 frames a second. But this is, is what matters. Splitting this over these threads allows me to bunch up um, this particular thing here, slot process, so that it only takes this amount of time and not four times as long. You can see how much extra time it would take from that. Anyway. I'm rambling. This is VTune XE Amplifier 2017, whatever it's called, um, made by Intel. It's very expensive, but it's very good. Um, and it takes a long time to work out how to use it. And it's kind of useless until you learn how to put the little markers in your code. I have noticed no impact, no impact whatsoever on the speed the game runs um, normally. Um, I just leave all of the, that stuff in. Okay, this is a release build. This is a release build of the game. It's not a debug build and you can still do this, which is cool. Um, if people find these videos interesting or helpful, let me know and I'll do more. There's a lot of like setting up nonsense um, in order to do it and a lot of um, rendering and, and all the rest of it. Um, Anyway, and if you appreciate it, check out my game, uh, which is called Production. This is the game. Look, behold, it's multi-threaded 
Ecstasy. Um, it's called Production Line and it's in Steam Early Access now. I am Cliff Harris. I um, have a blog at cliffski.com and I tweet at cliffski. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.